it's not leaking now but i mean you come over here and look at this nightmare of wiring and you look at this rat's nest this is ridiculous nothing's labeled you got insulation missing wire just twisted together i mean this is just how it has it shorted out it's beyond me this is jumps from in switch to in switch it's that broke off as soon as i moved it, it i'm redoing this crap because this is just ridiculous this video is brought to you in part by true tech tools quality tools essential support All right, guys, we got us a boiler here. That's residential. Let's go see what's going on. Hi there. How's it going? Oh, it's lovely. You said the boiler went out on you. Yeah. Um, now, the upstairs, uh -huh. if I click it, it come, seems to click and it'll come on. But this one here, it's like the zones are... The temperatures came up because we've got heaters running. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, because it was down to 59. Yeah, there's a little bit of warmth in the radiator, but yeah, a little bit. Oh, okay, I see what you got. You got your navy on. Yeah, so if we look here, there's a rubber gasket right there. And that should be up tight to that, and it's not. It's leaking exhaust fumes in there. Yeah, and that's causing moisture in here which is causing all this other nasty corrosion and stuff in here which can cause some issues which ain't probably why it wasn't running but definitely ain't right don't know why it sunk down like that or if it was like it from the factory or what but you can feel the hot gas yeah so we got that apart Yes, it's supposed to fit tight against this piece. It fits down in there, which it's got a little bit of a connection there. We need to pick up a new seal or we can silicone it one or the other until we get the seal. So that's the rubber that goes down in there. I mean, it fits, but it ain't as tight as it should be. And then that just goes on down in the hole. Yeah. I'll put some silicone around it for now. I've had helicopters. And so I went ahead, cleaned this igniter. It needs replaced. It looks horrible. This up here, I got some silicone it's encompassing that it's not leaking now. But I mean, you come over here and look at this nightmare of wiring. And you look at this rat's nest. This is ridiculous. Nothing's labeled. You got insulation missing. Wire just twisted together. I mean, this is just how it has it shorted out. It's beyond me. This is jumps from in switch to in switch. It's that broke off as soon as I moved it. it I'm redoing this crap because this is just ridiculous. And what's bad is you don't know if this is the problem or any of the other 15 problems. Because, I mean, this is what tells the boiler to run is these in switches thermostats get powered by them they just send a signal over to the boiler to run and circular air pumps and stuff run off of the call for the heat and then the zone valves open to let the water through these are your thermostats this here yeah see you got one terminal missing on that middle one i don't even know what the valve controls yeah that just broke off that's great so that's probably half of that problem there it just literally broke right off this has got to be the first floor because they used green and red i don't know why people don't use crimp connectors yeah look that's loose oh geez what a joke i do not show anything in the history that we've been here before not this location it's kind of hard not to fix all these problems and not obviously show that there's some problems especially when somebody was out here December which could have been another company I'm pretty sure it was it's the transformer coming in I mean look at this wiring how do you feel so that's a good job let's get rid of this garbage just get rid of it yeah when that's too short together the boiler should come on and there goes the boiler 
and see whoever skimmed this or stripped these wires. You can see they 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 cut into the wiring on that. All right, we got this all unwired. Got this garbage out of here, and just got to finish re doing this wiring here. The 24 volts stays on the outside terminal too. Thermostat fits on the second third one. Kind of like that right there. And then the end switches just go to the boiler. Any one of them closes and it sends power to the boiler over there. It's not rocket science. It's just obviously for some people. Now we won't connect both terminals just yet because we don't want it to short out while we're wiring it up. Okay, get a little bit of this out so we can clean this up. I think these do a lot better job connecting to the <coughs> terminals than the uh, wires themselves. Normally these are not good for solid core wire, but they'll be all right. It's a lot better than that garbage they did. So we'll go ahead and get these end switches done first. That's a lot more secure than that garbage that I just seen a minute ago. I'm just going with the crimp-ons. I think they're better. And you can see why these... The only thing I don't like about these, they do not strip thermostat wire. That's why you're seeing me use it sometimes without uh, the um, teeth. So we got this done. We got this all up and redone. So you've got the... It's, it, it still looks like hell. But it's crimped in there. You've got the transformer coming in on green and blue. So blue is one side of it going to the um, thermostat and coming back and attaching there. So your coil is over here and the other one's right here. But you're making your junction on a dummy terminal off to the right. Right now, if we close one of these valves like this, it should kick on. Well, no, because the thermostat wiring ain't hooked up yet. Okay, let's hook up this last one here. There goes the boiler. So that one there's calling. You can see there's no resistance there. This one here's calling, no resistance there. And that one there's calling with no resistance there. That was not happening before. We only had like one or two that was calling. So they weren't very good connections. But yeah, if uh, they're all to the open position and the end switches should all be closed. So we come in here with our meter. We can verify that and check across each circuit. Closed. And then technically they're in parallel, but whatever. Yeah, well they've got air in this thing, obviously. You can hear, hear it. I don't feel any hot air leaking out, which is good. The seal was there, it's just slightly a little bit of a gap, so that little sil bit of silicone actually sealed it. Now the gap that's between the rubber and the metal, that's not such a big deal because the piece that's right there actually goes deep down into it. And so we're good on that. Now you've got one bleed here and you've got an auto or spiral vent here, which is open. So you would think that this would uh, get the air out that are at just super high velocity. Yeah, we're cranking some. We're cranking some now. And there's their fill valve, which they put a anti-siphon on there. Pressure's a little low. We're barely 10. We're gonna watch it for a minute, see what it goes up to. Who knows if they got the tank set up right. If you look at the um, garden hose over here, it's always a bad sign and they left that hooked up. Uh, no real good reason for that. You can see they Ran it over there, so they've tried power bleeding it, is what they was probably trying to do. Which is where you force the boiler, uh, the water through the boiler, and uh, up to a stop, and then, like a garden hose, whoosh, 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 up to it, bleed it all out, stop it, go to the next section, and do it on and on. From what I'm seeing, here's your valve. So you valve it off here, you pressurize it, the water goes wherever it's gotta go, and it's gonna come down through eventually pushing it back to here. It 
um, this ain't really the greatest way of doing it. That's probably why they didn't get all the air out of it, because that's in parallel. I think what I'll do is I may just go around to some of the radiators and bleed it. Might be the easiest way to do it. Just added a little fast fill there, and it already brought it up to about 12 and a half, so I'm gonna adjust that screw just a turn or so. Okay, let's see where that puts us at. It's supposed to be set for 12, generally. It's close. Lock that up. Start seeing if our valves are coming back hot. Because what we got here is this pump here. You feel which way it is, so it's sucking it in there, so it's coming out through here. That's why they're coming to the vent, going out to all the different um, piping arrangements, wherever they are which looks like it goes to that big pipe there. And then eventually it must split and your stop and flow coming back. Each one of them is coming back hot. Now we got a little bit of a rattle here on this because the strap broke. So I'm gonna get that away from that so it doesn't rattle, cause the guy to call back in, actually wire tying. <laughs> Keeping that away from it would work good. It's not the way I'd rather see it, but at this point, I want to get the system running before we go jumping and getting parts and going stupid on stuff. It's generic, but it'll work. You would think we'd be getting some hissing out of this thing. We're not getting crap. I wonder if they even cleaned any of this out. I bet they didn't. They just reused it. But you can tell they did some major surgery. What they really did, from what I'm seeing, looks like they mainly just added a fill valve a new anti-siphon and possibly a ball valve over there there's so much going on here with this i'm gonna jeez i don't even want to touch it and get blamed for a bunch of i mean you can see the there's there's these yeah i mean look so yeah that's something we can always come back and out because I feel the feeling we're gonna you're gonna dig in you're gonna dig in all right so what we're doing is we're we added a valve here valved it off there open it up there so it comes in hits the boiler comes out of the boiler hits that ball valve it has no other place to go that out on that supply as it goes out through the house, it comes back and hits these zone valves. I'm opening up one zone valve at a time. And since that's partially plugged there, when I quit seeing bubbles, I know that I've got it all out of there. And then I switch over to the other one. I let go of it. It goes shut. And then you open up the next one and you start bleeding that one. And that's going to force all the air through the system uh, for the most part. And... Uh, what I found out was the spiral vent is actually bad. So I'm getting a price on that, which looks like it's now leaking, which is great. Just what I wanted. So, uh, yeah, we're just basically bleeding out each individual section that way. I've done a video on this before, just called power bleeding is what we always called it. And as uh, long as everything's in series, it works great. If it's in parallel, then it's a lot more difficult for it to work. But that's what I'm doing because... All the bleeders, I went up there, went through room by room uh, that I could get to, which there was quite a few I couldn't. That, um, you know, several of them didn't work, and then the ones that didn't work was the ones that I couldn't get into. So you can only do so much, and this right here is the best way if it works, uh, if the piping's set up for that. And I'm not seeing anything air-wise out of that one. So I'm going to let that one shut and come back to this middle one because I'm pretty sure the middle one here is the one that had most of the air in it. And then we'll do the uh, other one closest to me, which is right there. And that should, uh, hopefully, I mean, it was getting warm. Yep, see, there was a little bubble. There you go. Just pull that over and lock it. You can see the water coming through. And it's cold, so that means we're pushed all the hot water out. But by having it in there like that, you can see if there's any air bubbles coming through. I think when whoever did this work a month or two ago, probably got all the uh, air in the system. So let's go ahead and close that one. 
and we'll go ahead and open this one. See if we get anything on that one. Yep, there we go. Told you I heard something. See, you can see the little air bubbles there. I'm hearing something else coming. Yeah, you can hear it. Making funny noises. And I only got one at a time. If you open up more than one at a time, it won't work. But it, yep, there's some more. So, like I said, this comes into one header, goes out. If you can not tripping over everything. Uh, one inch and a quarter pipe and it starts jumping. And that's what they've got. Yeah, we're still getting some... As soon as that thing goes quiet, we know we got it. Then we'll switch back to the other ones to make sure we didn't get no back uh, flow. And then uh, hopefully we'll wrap it up because this was working pretty good. Um, if we do decide to replace the guts on the spiral vent, which I obviously recommend because they're probably one of the better vents out there, then uh, we'll get that rubber seal for that thing too at the same time, which in theory it's fine, but it's still just not the way I want to be known for doing work. So, and I need to order some igniters for that because they were pretty, pretty ate up. Now, since we have pressure on the boiler, nine pounds area, while we're still draining it, I'm going to kick this on so that it runs the circulators because that technically is coming back over to here. And that should push anything up here to this one here as long as it still works, which I haven't heard a tss 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 out of it yet. <laughs> All right, I think we're pretty good. So let's go ahead and close that up. And let's see how she does. Um, here we go. Open that. So we open that valve. These are all still open. And uh, should be up to huh, 13 pounds area. So that adjustment I did, 13.7, 14, that's good enough for me. Go ahead and hook this power back up and see what happens. All right, so went ahead and took that apart. We're cleaning that up. Doesn't look too bad. You can blow through that end there. So going to finish cleaning that fluid up and wipe the bowl out and then that way I make sure that thing's working because it didn't sound like it was. Blood some water up here and it rose. And uh, so it's it's open and it's not leaking. So I'm happy with that. I think I'm gonna bleed it one more time because when I kicked it on the pumps started uh, sloshing a little bit, which you know, you can only do so much. That's why I wanted to make sure that one's working. Like I said, this one here I know is not working and it's leaking, which sucks. So yeah, go figure, right? You have to run some Teflon tape or something on that. I'm not sure. It's a bad thing about taking things apart. You ain't got the freaking parts. We're finally starting to get some warmth here. We're at 97 degrees. It just kicked on. Everything's kind of started and been running. Got the cover on to make sure everything fires with the cover on. You can feel it starting, like I said, get warm going out. So now I'm kind of just checking to see which one comes back hottest or comes back hot first. I'm just a little curious. And there's another bleeder up there that should have probably been replaced. It's funny, they took all that apart and redoped everything, but they didn't replace the parts. It's just so stupid. Now, I do have uh, one of those manually kicked open because the thermostat must have satisfied. They, they were all getting pretty close. But uh, I uh, did get a uh, call back from the supply house. They do have that. Just got to get permission for that. Uh, that's going to drip. There ain't much I can do about it. Um, it'll be fine, uh, but uh, yeah, we're gonna have to get that replaced. It really don't seem like that's an option. So these two right here seem to have gotten gotten it both about the same. Maybe this one a little bit quicker, but that's good. It means we're coming back warm uh, on those two at least. This one here must be the slab because one of them has a slab that goes out. And they're worried that maybe one of them's leaking possibly. Uh, I don't know why they thought that. Maybe just because of they had another problem at one of their other um, buildings. But yeah, but that's what we ran into. The main problem we had was 
the wiring was uh, not making good contact with the zone valves. They weren't giving a call to the boiler every time. Uh, some of the zones weren't opening. They had air in the system. They had um, no way to really bleed it. The auto bleeder over there was gummed up. This one here probably could use a good cleaning, but now that I've got the air out, I'm not messing with it now. Didn't see it until just now. And uh, that pretty much is going to probably wrap it up. Other than coming back to replace that spiral vent, which is, like I said, uh, bad. If you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.